everyone, this is Lucy. Welcome back to my channel, or welcome if you're new. It's time for another nail tutorial. Full disclosure, this is a sponsored video, but as always, all of the opinions are my own and honest. So these are lid gels. It's a small woman-owned business. All of these designs were created by the founder, Julie, and she really takes a lot of time figuring out what the nail trends are and what's going to look good. I posted an unboxing reel on my Instagram. I'll put a link in the description box. But I suggest you watch that because she sent me a beautiful package full of different goodies and I show off this really cool holographic bag in the natural sunlight. I swear I could play with that for hours in there. So I definitely suggest you watch that. Anyway, I asked my followers on Instagram and on Facebook which design I should put on or which design they like the most. So we have Juniper here, Aurora, and Cider. Most of you voted for Aurora with Juniper in second place, but I really love the cider one. It speaks to my heart. I love anything orange, and honestly, I'm so ready for fall. It is so hot, and fall is just my favorite season. On the back of the package, you can find instructions on how to apply these, but we're going to do a couple of extra little steps that make a huge difference in how long the strips wear and how good they look. This is what's included. We have a really nice good quality feeling file. A lot of the times the files that brands include are really flimsy and I don't use them. We have an orange stick, a couple prep pads, just alcohol pads, and then a couple toothpicks. And if you've seen my removal video, definitely check it out if you haven't. But these are super handy for removing all types of stick-ons. The gels are the ones that don't have to be cured. These are really great. Julie really knows her stuff when it comes to nails. She knows all the tips and tricks, and that's probably why she included these, because she's so well informed. I've never seen a brand include these for removal purposes before. And then, of course, we have the nails themselves. The brand is working on having a flatter packaging that would be easier to ship, easier to store, and reduce waste as well, but for now, this is what the boxes look like. They're also working on including more medium and larger size nails and going up from 28 strips per pack to 30 strips per pack. And that's going to happen in the next one or two months. So stay tuned, especially if you have larger nail beds. These can be stretched, however, to fit you better, but don't stretch it more than about a millimeter or two because you're going to compromise the design at that point. When it comes to manicures, nail prep is super important. It is almost more important than the application itself because if your prep game is not strong, you're not going to have long lasting results. And I don't mind spending a few extra minutes or even 15 extra minutes, it does not take that long, but I don't mind spending extra time applying if that means that my nails will look good for two weeks. Because not only do I want these to stay on for two weeks, I want them to look good the whole two weeks. I don't want stuff peeling, I don't want anything chipping. And what I'm doing right now is pushing back the cuticle. Some people do cut the cuticle, but I don't like doing that. I feel like you can injure yourself and then open yourself up to infection potentially. For me, pushing it back is much easier and it looks good to me. And this is a very inexpensive little tool the metal cuticle pusher. I'll put links for everything in the description box. It's obviously infinitely reusable, so you only have to purchase it once and it's very, very affordable. Now I'm using one of the prep pads to finish degreasing the nails. One tip that Julie shared with me, I wanted to make sure that I pass on to you, is that prepping your hands by washing them with dish soap can really help the application process because dish soap is fantastic at removing oil and grease, not just on dishes, but on nail beds as well. And I actually remember that tip way back when I used to sell nails a long time ago. And that was something that was shared even back then. I've never heard a brand owner mention that before. Just shows you how informed she is. All right, these are prepped. This is fairly long for me, but I like this length and I'm going to keep that length. If you have super long nails that are way past your comfort level, you could trim them at this point, but I'm not going to. I like to trim a little bit of the nail sometimes when I cut the strips down, uh, just to make sure that the strips are flush with the nail. So we'll see what happens today though after application. We'll see what I think about the final look. Now it's time to pick the size. If you have to choose between too small and too large, 
Choose slightly smaller versus slightly larger. Don't want anything overlapping. I say that in every nail video. You can, again, stretch these a little bit, but I'm going to see if I can actually find some that fit straight out of the package, so to speak. All I'm doing is just lining it up and kind of seeing where it falls. Okay, I think it's this one. All of these have a little extra protective film on the top. I'm going to peel that off, set that aside, and now peel the sticker off without touching the part that's going to go on my nail. I can use my hands for this because my nails are not that long, but if your nails are long enough to where you need most of the strip length, I would use tweezers to peel them off to avoid getting your nail or your finger oils onto the sticker. All right, now we're going to line it up as close to the cuticle as possible without going over, try to have it straight, and then let go like that. I let go before I really smush it down because I want to see that it's straight. At this point, if this were crooked, I could still lift it off and reposition it, but if you start by pushing it down super firmly and then try to reposition it, that's a lot harder. It seems pretty straight to me. I'm gonna push down. Push down, push down, and then here's another little additional infinitely reusable cheap tool that I like. It's the rubber tip cuticle pusher. And I take that and just go around the edges of the sticker, pushing down hard but not too hard. These are semi cured, so they're not fully hard, and you don't want to push too too intensely, you don't want to dent them. This is why I like using these versus orange sticks. And then just kind of smooth it around as my camera goes in and out of focus. There we go, like that. Let's do one more. Actually, let's trim this one. The next step would be clipping or trimming these. I prefer using manicure scissors to trim because I'm so used to that. If you're used to clippers, that's fine. You can use clippers because we're going to clean up all of that potentially uneven stuff later. I'll show you how. This is where if I wanted to take off some nail length, I could just cut the nail with the sticker or to reshape it. Let's say make it a little bit more straight at the top. I'm going to cut this way. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect at this stage. Just get some of the length off of that sticker so it's not flapping around. And have a little, there we go, like that. Well, let's do another one. I think this one is a good size here. Again, peel the sticker off, the top protective sticker. Get this off and then line it up as close to the cuticle as possible without going over. Make sure too, before you start, that your nails and hands are clean and dry. In a lot of my nail videos, my skin looks super dry and that's okay. It's because I wash and dry my hands. I don't put any lotion on. I don't do anything like that. You can do all of that later, preferably the following day. But when you are applying, it's okay to have your skin look and feel a little bit dry. It's much, much better than to have lotion go under the strip, under the sticker, and then, you know, it's not going to last as long. If you look closely here, you can see that there's a little bit of space between my skin and the sticker. Right there. That is fine. That sliver, no big deal so much better than having the sticker get to the skin or overlap. Because look what happens. If you look straight on or almost at any angle without zooming in on it like I do when I'm doing application, you can't even tell. And this little color, I don't know what you'd call it, like a brick? No, it's not a brick. It's, it's not red enough to be a brick. It's a really pretty reddish brown. It's semi-translucent, and I love that. It has this uh, jelly look that's really popular right now. I really like how that looks. I wanted one of these mustard, is it mustard? It's fancy mustardy color, I think. I wanted that for my index finger, but I think this one here is too big. 
but this one might be slightly too narrow. So let's try and stretch it. I'm going to peel it off the same way I did the other ones. And then I'm going to just hold it at the edge here gently, grab the other edge, the right edge with my right hand, and then gently pull, 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 pull wiggle. That made it wide enough, slightly wider, but wide enough to fit my nail properly, I think. Because when it comes to nail sizes, a millimeter or half a millimeter can make all the difference. And same thing, push it down. I like to also pull back the side, a little bit the skin, to make sure that the sticker goes on the nail only and doesn't overlap anywhere. I keep saying that, but it's really important. It's very important not to go on the skin. And same thing here. Push it down, smooth it out, trim it, and keep going. I applied all of these and trimmed them. I have a couple notes to share. In addition to stretching the solid color that I already showed you, I also had to stretch both of these with the design on them, and that worked just fine. The design did not distort. And then I figured out that it really does not matter in terms of performance which end of the nail you put toward the cuticle. So for some brands, it's really important. They'll say, okay, this end has to go toward the cuticle or this end. But for these, I played around with that to see what works best for each individual nail and each design. For thumbs, for example, I picked this side because it's flatter here, but if I had a more rounded cuticle end on the thumb, then I would do this side. All of that to say is depending on the design, play around with it and see what makes sense. And with solids especially, it really doesn't matter. Just pick the end that matches your cuticle line more closely and put that toward the cuticle line. Because these are semi-cured, they're not fully cured, we have to finish curing them. That's why I'm wearing UV protective gloves. You can get these on Amazon fairly inexpensively. Any brand will do, in my opinion. And then we have the Slit Gels lamp. It's very nice and portable, especially if you want to travel with your nail sets and do them somewhere outside of the home. And then these little legs pop out. And there's a little power bank there and an on button here. The instructions say to cure these for two minutes or until hard. So if you're using a different lamp than this, maybe check after one round with your lamp, see if they look hard and maybe do two rounds. Just really depends on the light and the power that you have. These are cured now. This is when I would file them. I have seen some of you say that you've tried filing semi-cured strips before curing them, and that's a really hard thing to do and it's messy because they're soft. Now they're hard, it's super easy to file. And I typically use my own kind of coarse grit file because most of the other brands have such flimsy little files in their kits. But this one is actually really good. All I'm going to do is clean up the edges a little bit. If you wanted to reshape the nail a bit at this point, you could. But I'm actually pretty happy with the shape that I have right now and I'm happy with the length. I am trying to let them grow a little bit. So I'm going to just keep most of that. I strongly recommend filing mostly in one direction instead of back and forth to avoid fraying both the strip and the nail. All I'm trying to do is make sure that everything is smooth, there are no little pokey parts, and that none of my nail extends past the strip visibly, but also that none of the sticker hangs over the nail. Filing is done and we can technically stop here. You're technically done and it's fine, but I really like doing one additional last optional step that makes a huge difference and it's totally worth it. Before we do that, I would like to remind you to keep your spare or leftover strips that could be very well used again out of the way when you're curing your hands because you will cure these if they just get in the way of the light and then they will not be usable. I like that the pouch is resealable. It makes it really easy. Just stick them in there and keep that for later. If you've seen any of my other nails videos and I have a whole nails playlist, I always use a clear top coat. And I started out with these two-part nail coats where I would do a base like over the strips and then do a top and then you had to wipe them off with rubbing alcohol. But now brands make 
the wipe top coats like this one oh, I really like this little embossed that's fancy I like this one so I'm glad to try this one I'm going to very gently not shake it up and down but just sort of swirl it around like this you don't want to shake it up and down because some can go in the lid and then you'll have a glob of gel come out we don't want that. All I'm going to do with this is cap the free edge and then put a thin layer over the nail to kind of make the sticker and the nail one unit instead of having a line here at the end, I'll show you. I'm gonna get the excess off the brush. I always, always, always start with the free edge and cap it. I'm putting gel polish here very carefully over the strip and the natural nail like this because I want to seal this. I cook all the time, I do laundry, I take care of children, so anything I can do to prolong my manicure I'm going to do within reason of course and then we're going to just do a thin layer over the top, don't go on the skin, and the main body of the nail doesn't really need a top coat. You just mostly want to cap it, but obviously it's going to look weird if you just cap it. So I put it all over the nail. And if you have very ridged nails, sometimes putting a top coat can help hide the ridges. I have pretty ridged nails, but these stickers actually hide the ridges really well even before I do, I do the top coat. I've tried some others um, recently that highlighted my ridges and it drove me absolutely bonkers. Uh, but these ones actually hide them really well without being too terribly thick. If you paint the nail first and then cap the free edge, you will have a little bulge right toward the tip like I do now, you can maybe see that. But putting the gel on the rest of the nail afterwards smooth as that little bulge out. This is it, this is the finished look with the no wipe top coat, meaning I don't have to wipe it off with rubbing alcohol, there's no tacky layer. When I was applying the top coat I noticed that I managed to scratch this nail with a nail file when I was filing my thumb, but the top coat completely hit that so everything looks totally nice and shiny. Most importantly for me specifically, the tips are completely sealed so now it's just one unit the nail and the sticker you can't see that separation anymore thank you again Legels for sending me this formula I know you worked really hard for months on end with the manufacturer to come up with a custom formula just for you so I'm really happy that I got to try these if you are not following me on Instagram go ahead and do that I am there at Hobbit, and I have a nails highlight where I post the progress of how the nails wear because I can't always put that in videos so you can see sort of like real life updates of what's happening and what they look like as I wear them as they grow out etc etc if you need help removing these you don't know how to remove them I have a removal video I'll link in the description box as well but it's usually fairly simple and does not damage the nails you saw my bare nails in the beginning of the video I removed another set of gel strips just a few days ago and as you saw there was no visible damage. So thank you again for joining me today. Check out Lit Gels, check out their Instagram and check out their website. You can use my affiliate code KBHobbit for 15% off and if you end up trying them please let me know what you think about them. If you have any questions let me know, I'll do my best to answer, just leave me a comment. Thank you so much for joining me. You can find me on Instagram at kbeautyhobbit, my blog kbeautyhobbit.com, and in my private Facebook group, Korean Beauty Fanatics. I'll see you in my next video, and until then, please remember to always listen to your skin. Thank you so much. Bye.